Yo, Elliot, what's one book on masculinity you would recommend me to read besides the Bible? I want to know what being a real man is about. There are really good books. There are lots of really good books. Uh, the best book is the open book of an actual masculine man, right? So before I actually give you literature, I just have to say for those listening that nothing beats having an alpha male father or uncle or grandfather, somebody in your life who actually carries that banner, fills that role and lives that life himself. Because reading books is intellectual, but as Robert Bly says in his book, Iron John, which is one I would highly recommend, Iron John, put that on your list. Uh, he says that when a young man is around older men and they're learning and, and, you know, he's mentoring them, that there's a subconscious food. He says that there's a nourishment that passes from the father to the boy that doesn't happen through words. It doesn't happen through explanations. It only happens through presence, right? And I think I remember as a kid, like how that would happen with me when I would be working with my dad. Either he's teach, he's trying to show me how to do something, or a lot of times my dad would be working on something and I'd just be near him. And just hearing the way he talked to himself, just listening to my dad breathe. I know this sounds strange, but when I was like 14, 15 years old, I would get grounded a lot. I would get, I would get my dad would always ground me. And one day he ground me and he put me in the basement He's like, I had enough of you, kid. I'm throwing you down in the basement. So I had a bedroom upstairs, but he threw me all the way down to the basement. The basement is where the weights were, right? I had a power rack and a barbell and plates. So he basically just like created my future. He's like, you're going to live down there with the weights. I was like, yeah, that's it. And you know what I picked up at that age? Weightlifting. Yeah, so my, my life never my life was never the same since he grounded me that one time put me in the basement with the weights anyway my dad trained too he liked to lift but he would lift at like five o'clock in the morning you get down there like 4 30 in the morning and i'd be sleeping and i remember he would be training down there he wouldn't listen to music but he would breathe heavily And I remember just sleeping and, he, and I hear my dad right across the room, right? Right across the room. And I would just hear the plates clink, clink. And so there was some sort of energy, like my father's energy was being breathed on me in that moment. I never forget that. It was the strangest thing because I'd be in a, like a twilight sleep. So before I get into books, and I already gave you one, I cannot emphasize enough how important it is for a young man to receive that subconscious food from the presence of older alpha male men, man. Nothing, nothing, nothing beats that. But while we're on the topic, books. I said Iron John. Let me tell you a little something about Iron John. Iron John is definitely a book at the top of my list. But Iron John didn't make sense to me as a man until after 35. Because the, the book is about the journey, the, enti the lifelong evolution of a man. And when I was still a boy in my 20s or early 30s, some of the topics, some of the, uh, the, the, the material within the book just didn't, it didn't resonate with me yet. It wasn't until my mid-30s where I ends up, ended up having a catabasis of sorts, a going down and a, and a, and a going in and, and, and a questioning of myself. Uh, that all of the poetic references within the book started ringing true to me. And I will say this, that it's probably the one book I've listened to on audio. I've, I've read the book once, but then I put it on Audible. I bought it on Audible. I must have listened. I guaranteed I listened to that book more than any other book I've ever had. Iron John by Robert Bly. And I will just let it play over and over and over and over again and there's just there are more nuggets there were more pieces it would just start coming out it's i'm not going to call it like the bible right because it's, it's you know divine revelation versus a really really good book um but the way it reads is like the bible in that there are layers where you'll see something one time but depending on where you are in your life and you go back and read it or listen to it you could see something totally different it's definitely one of those types of books, and it's based on myth and poetry. And he's, he speaks quite a bit about Jesus in an interesting way in there, right? Um, he talks about Jesus as a wild man of sorts, meaning like he wasn't going with the flow. He was willing to step out and speak up 
and do what needed to be done as a man. And he uses him as a, as a good example of the man, except he also calls out the feminized version of Jesus, the meek and mild feminized version of Jesus that we see in a lot of churches today. So there's a lot of myth, there's a lot of religion, there's a lot of uh, philosophy and a ton, a ton of poetry in that book. So if that's your, that's your bent, you, for a book to, like that to resonate with you, you have to be a little bit in touch with your beta side. Right. And that's something I'm probably going to talk about later on today. I think one of the questions require that I speak about how men also need a beta side. You know, all oh, let's talk about alpha. I think it's cool uh, because we need it because we become so soft, so blue pill, so weak and wishy washy as men uh, that there's not enough alpha energy. There's really there's not enough father energy. That's really the issue. There's not enough father energy. Um, so we don't know how to be alpha male men, but you can't be you can't be all hot, and no cool. And so with this book, it requires you to sort of soften up, open up your heart a little bit and let it carry you. You know, it's a, it's a passive adventure sometimes in a way, uh, as opposed to like a, a book that is um, nonfiction, a book that is like just straightforward in facts. And there are some of those that are pretty good. Uh, none of them that I think I resonate with too much in terms of these, this topic. So I put Iron John at the top of that list, man. A few other books that are important for men to read. I think one one that's really important to read because it gives you a global perspective on gender relations, intersexual dynamics, not from a tactical space, but from a helicopter view. And that is David Dita, The Way of the Superior Man. The Way of the Superior Man. I'll put that there. So let, let me put it let me put it this way. I'll give you three books. I know you said what one book besides the Bible, but I will say Iron John, The Way of the Superior Man, and then I also want to say King, Warrior, Magician, Lover, but really anything by Robert Moore, anything by Robert Moore, I really like it, um, and then there's, a, then there's one more book by Kennedy Hall called um, Reclaiming Traditional Catholic Masculinity, Short little book, small little book, contemporary writer. I like his stuff. He's got some really good, um, he's got some really good YouTube videos out there. Kennedy Hall, he's Catholic. Uh, and when he talks about reclaiming Catholic masculinity, he's talking about that stoic, strong provider, protector, male at home, proper place for men and women, you know, uh, for a man to really exercise his full masculinity, he needs to be in the presence of a feminine woman, right? A receiving passive woman, a woman who's willing to be led. And so it's a, that's another good book. Kennedy Hall, I'll throw that, I'll throw that out there for you. Um, I'm reading some of your comments here. And, and uh, Tillman says, save my marriage, right? Uh, and so that, being, that reminds me of one more book. I'll give you one more book. I'm just giving you a bunch of books I'm thinking of. Another book is um, um, Defending Marriage in a Degenerate Age, right? Or Protecting Your Marriage in a Degenerate Age. That's a really good book. Uh, man, there's so many. I think I'm going to stop there. Robert, uh, or um, there's another one I was looking at yesterday. I really like Husbands and Fathers by Derek Prince. I bought a couple copies of that book. So I'm just giving you a whole lot. I'm giving you a whole lot. But those are my favorite there, dude. And so uh, definitely get those books on your list. Oh, Hard Times Create Strong Men, right? Stefan Arnio, another really good one. Just go scan through my, uh, my recommended reading list for the King Transformation Program and just start picking them, dude. Picking them, reading them, and they're all going to help you in some way, shape, or form. Keep up the great work, bro. Keep reading the Bible, too. And keep growing stronger. Talk soon. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week, and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you, and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day, in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.